Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad and today I am going to share with you my number one performance modification for the 10th generation Honda Accord. So this modification is easy to install if you don't have the location, the tools, or the know-how to install certain modifications on your car. This is a relatively easy install. If you're someone who is looking to increase the performance of your car, but you don't have a lot of money to spend, or you simply don't want to spend a lot of money, relatively speaking, this is probably the best bang for the buck performance modification you can make on your 10th generation Honda Accord. Or maybe you're someone who wants to increase the performance, but you do not want to increase the sound levels of your car. You'd like to keep it as quiet as possible, keep it relatively stock, not draw attention to yourself. This modification will do that too. If you're interested in hearing more, then stay tuned. So what is this modification? Could it be an exhaust? Nope, doesn't meet all that criteria. Is it an intake? Not an intake. Maybe it's tires. I'm a big proponent of tires. A good set of tires will add performance, whether it's grip for acceleration, grip for cornering, or grip for braking. Great modification uh, is a good set of tires, but no, it's not a good set of tires. What I'm talking about is an ECU tuner. For those of you not familiar with it, very quickly, what an ECU tuner is, is it's, in a, it's a device that can talk to your car's ECU. Picture an ECU as being the brains of your car. Think of your engine and the fact that your engine has to inhale air, combine that with fuel, and spark it with a spark plug to light it for combustion to produce power. The ECU of your car controls all that. It'll make all the adjustments needed to create the proper air fuel ratio for your car to run optimally. What an ECU tuner does is it gives the user the ability to make changes to that. And before you get too nervous, you can buy an ECU tuner that contains base maps already predefined so you don't have to actually make those uh, maps yourself. The three primary ECU tuners for, currently anyways, for the 10th generation Honda Accord is Honda, K-Tuner, and JB4. Now the Honda and K-Tuner are very, very similar in that it gives the user the ability to, to directly make changes to the ECU. The JB4 itself is more of an add-on that tricks the signals or the information being provided to the ECU into behaving a little differently. So at the end of the day, it does provide a very similar uh, result, but it does it in a very different way. I've heard a lot of good things about the K-Tuner and I wanted to try it out. So I bought one. <laughs> K-Tuner has two solutions to select from a 1.2 version. What I bought is the Flash V2 version. This has a display you can mount in your car. This one being the version two is $650. And yes, $650 is rather expensive, but if you think about how much some of the air intakes are anywhere between 250 to 400. Um, if you look at some of the exhausts available, not even talking about the down pipe or the front pipe, but the front pipe back, uh, a lot of the exhausts run anywhere between 840 upwards of $1,500. So comparatively speaking, the K-Tuner is a bargain. Han Data, I believe is $695. So if you decide to go that route, you also have that. And then JB4 is, I'm excited I got this. This is relatively cheap. You install this on your car, 
It's mostly software, should be an easy install. If you install this, at least according to K-Tuner, it has some phenomenal claims as far as how much horsepower and torque you can gain, which if that's true, that is great. And we're gonna find out if that's true. We're gonna install this on the car and I'm going to go through over the course of several videos, I am going to have the car dyno to see what the actual horsepower we're producing with this tune is. Uh, I am going to conduct some zero to 60 tests. And by the way, we've already done baseline dynos with our car. We've already done some zero to 60 testing. If you haven't checked out those videos, take a look at the description below. We're going to go deeper into some of the data logging capabilities, some of the customization you can make as far as the data that you can see on the tuner itself. We'll go more in depth in future videos. But for today, we're gonna to quickly install the K-Tuner on the car. I'm not gonna go in depth. There are plenty of videos out there, including videos that are offered on the K-Tuner website. To install this on your car, you're gonna to go to the website. You're going to download their software to a Windows-based machine. So after you've downloaded that, what you wanna do is you wanna take your K-Tuner along with the OBD cable and take it to your car and plug it in and it, the screen will come to life and take you through the process. What you're doing is marrying the K-Tuner to your car. You're introducing the K-Tuner to your car so the K-Tuner knows, okay, this is your car. What's happening is it will lock to your car, meaning it will only be able to be uh, used with your car. This prevents people from buying a K-Tuner and then sharing it amongst friends uh, without having to purchase their own. And then we will bring this back in, connect it to our laptop, and we'll have the ability to upload specific base maps that K-Tuner has already created. Again, you don't have to create any maps for yourself. These are already made by K-Tuner. You can select which ones, and when once you marry this to your car, and then you go back and attach it to your laptop, uh, the fact that it's already connected with your car should allow the software to clearly identify the base maps that you should be using. So I just finished the install. No issues, very easy, just follow the directions and the videos that are provided on the K-Tuner website. One thing I noticed on the website, they didn't give a good um, indication of where the OBD2 port is. Once you've uploaded your flash, your tune to the car, just be aware that all sorts of warning lights are going to go off, and that is perfectly normal. What I did was after the flash was downloaded, I started the car back up, all the lights are lit up. I drove around, you know, half a mile to a mile. The lights were still on, but once I got back, turned off the car, and then immediately turned it back on, all the lights were gone. So now that it's installed, let's go take a test drive and really see if we can feel the difference in horsepower. <laughs> that that was from a standstill um <laughs> and there was a little bit of you know it wasn't perfectly straight so i don't want you to get the impression that it's going to be like that every single time but let's put a smile on your face it is readily apparent that you are getting more horsepower and torque You notice it because you will spin your tires. There we go. You're definitely gonna lose traction unless you have a good set of tires. And you will spin the tires in several of the gears. So I'm not talking about from a dead st stop. I am talking about I'm cruising at 30 miles per hour and then I give it gas and it's spinning. Sure. It is very entertaining. gas mileage with this K-Tuner. If your steering wheel is turned 
to any degree and you give it, you know, you get on the gas a little bit. I'm not talking about 100% wide open throttle. I'm just talking about, you know, 50% to, you know, 80%. Again, you will chirp the tires. You will experience some torque steer. I can feel it. I can feel the torque steer in the steering wheel. Just a slight angle on the steering on this road here and I can feel the the wheel pulling from the additional horsepower and torque. And it's all at lower RPM, so you don't have to wind out the engine. I also noticed, which is interesting, that the car just feels more, it feels smoother. Throttle is more responsive, more responsive to input and smoother. Two things stand out the whole time that I was test driving the car is, this car needs a limited slip differential. <laughs> you see that traction control kicking in? Can't handle <laughs> the torque, especially when going around corners or with any curve to it. A limited slip differential and an LSD would really benefit this car. That might be something we consider in the future. In addition to that, definitely tires. I am going to eat through my tires uh, with this K tuner. I wanna make sure that I have the grip to get the best times possible. All the torque is down low. It makes it really enjoyable, really fun to drive, and it actually gives the sensation that this car is actually faster still than what it is. I wouldn't be surprised if with the stage two tune, it takes off half a second from that which is, is significant. If, if it does, and we're gonna find out if it does, that's significant for the price. It was easy to install, relatively inexpensive, and you know what, except for me getting on the gas even more so, it doesn't add any uh, increased noise to the car. So if you're trying to stay under the radar or keep things quiet, then definitely consider this modification. So again, thank you, and until next time. It's fun.